everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I am reviewing a very long awaited palette, paint palette that I received from Faber Castell a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've just been so busy with baby and work and other stuff that I've just not gotten around to it and it's been driving me insane because I've been so excited about this palette and um, I, so today is just the day. So first of all, um, looking at it, I got the 36 palette from Faber Castell. This is not a sponsored um, video so this is really my honest opinion about the product okay so as you can see on the back it says you get a water brush um, it shows you how the detachable uh, mixing palette work and you can hold it in your hand like you would hold a palette and then it also shows you the colors now this is a very good combination of colors um, and ooh, it's so pretty um, as you can see you get six different you get uh, how many is it 30 colors and then three metallics and three neons um, you also get this little aqua brush with and it shows you what the end of the lid is for which I've never known that's what you use the end of the lid of the little doopy for I didn't know you can scrape paint with it or create textures I learned something new and then I really 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 like this top lid which I was struggling to get back but it's so cool that you can actually detach it and then you can lay flat and mix your colors um, Okay, so uh, this brush is the same as their graphite water brush, which is the little green one that um, a lot of us use for Bible journey or just sketching. Um, I just went to get a little dripper thingy to put water in. Okay, so once you've loaded up with water, it's gravity fed, so the water will just um, go down as you squish it or wiggle it. Um, you don't have to actually dip it in water every time you want to clean it. It is self-clean So as you finish using the color, you can literally just wipe it on the side um, I just Continued using a different brush because I just don't want to have so much water um, You have a lot of control over the brush, but I just thought for Making things a little bit faster during the swatching process. I'm just going to use my normal brush and a little tip which I don't do um, you'll see sometimes I just stop doing it but I always like to paint with two cups of water one to clean your brush and one to mix with um, but I sometimes forget that's what I actually do and then don't leave your brushes in water it prolongs the life of your brush and it helps that your bristle stays intact okay so let's talk about the colors these colors are very bright and vibrant um, I do find that they have a bit of like a um, lime slash chalky smell which means they do have an extender but this is student is it student it's part of their creative um, studio which is not like 100% Albrecht Dura but it's very good quality I mean I own the gold Faber watercolor pencils and the normal pencils and compare them to my Albrecht Dura polychromos or the the watercolor pencils that I have you have to try really hard to see the difference um, but the collection of colors that they have in this palette is super pretty I mean look at those blues and every color has a very distinct color change which for me is very nice because a lot of times the you get like some palettes they don't have that distinct color variation um, and then I'm excited to start swatching the metallics and the neons but let me just go on about this green the green like from where the blue transcends into the browns are beautiful they have like two beautiful olivey greens which is like colors that I really like to mix myself when I paint leaves because I don't like those typical fresh greens but they're what's those two colors called I think it is where is it now like 264-2170 those color changes they are beautiful it's 278 and 170 they are beautiful um, and then uh, I would have liked to get the 48 palette because I really super duper luxe wanted the gray um, that's a color I use quite a lot paint it's like they call it what do they call it they call it cold gray and I think it must be similar to like Payne's gray so I would have I'm definitely going to buy myself the 48 set because I actually want all the other colors um, but let's look at the gold so the gold like the metallics are a bit like they struggle to activate and they don't really uh, become fully like visible on paper so I'm going to just swatch them on black to see what they're like um, 
I must say they're nice but the pigment is not as like intense and um, the neons are quite cool but I don't know where you would use neon because it's not like in my preference of palette colors but I still like the neons I mean I've never had neon watercolor paint so that's quite fun um, and in any case as you can see it actually looks quite nice on like black so i'm thinking if you use this on black you would actually get a nice effect i normally don't use gold solidly on artworks i like using them on um like on top of another artwork as accents or to give like little shimmers and stars and just hints of like sparkliness um, it's not something that i would physically go and paint like matte gold or so i'm just um so i'm just gonna mark up some space where I'm just going to do a couple of bits to see how it would go. Um, let's say if you want to cover a whole space and how they blend. Um, overall, I'm very impressed. Um, this is really affordable paints um, and super quality paints at an affordable price. I mean, um, I own Sakura, which is um, like uh, hair alert. Um, I own Sakura paints, which is like a very good entry level paint. And this is not as expensive, but on par with quality. Um, I haven't tried the metallics of Sakura or the neon, so I know they have a neon palette, which I've been saving for, but I don't get around to buying it. Um, and yeah, I, I must say, I'm, I'm like super chuffed. The one thing I can say about Robert Castell is, and this is something that I really know, um, they listen to their consumers. I remember we've been talking about this for a very long time, um, that we would really want a palette in for, for the Robert Castell ranges that we use. Um, they did bring out those little tubes, but the colors are not as intense and beautiful as these colors here. So for me, this is really a win on their side. and. Anybody who likes the Fabrica style brand, I think you would be very happy buying these products, especially um, because of their quality versus their price. Um, I would say that overall, this is really a, an amazing set. And also another thing that I didn't know is see or say is that they have that little sponge. So you don't actually need to carry tissues or whatever with you. You can clean your brush on the little spongy that's in the art box. In the little traveling box um, yeah I, I must say this is a, a very interesting very interesting and pretty palette and and this this for me I, I didn't know that was what the lid of your aqua brush was for but I don't think this is something I would um, use in the future but this is very cool um, overall I think that this paint blends beautifully it dries quite true to color I mean versus wet versus dry and also I'm gonna taste the light fastness now which is just a fancy word for saying how um, the paint reacts to exposure to light and humidity without fading darkening shifting color and yeah but we'll see that now once I start doing a little artwork and also we'll see if this paint is permanent because a lot of of more affordable paints they tend to lift when you paint on top of it so you can't really layer um, but as you can see the colors are amazing and this isn't even watercolor paper this is just like a, a multimedia sketchbook paper it's not even watercolor paper so I am going to be painting on watercolor once I do my actual little artwork another interesting thing is this these palettes even the 48 one doesn't contain white the reason being is um, white isn't actually mixed in to lights and colors because it makes it milky and opaque. So if you want to create a lighter color, I would suggest just adding more water. And if you want to create a darker color, you can either add less water or you can layer until you achieve the depth of color that you want. So the first thing that I did was um, I wanted to mix the colors and I'm going to use a wet on wet technique to test the fluidity of the paint. Um, this will also show us how the paint interacts with one another. Is it blendable? Um, yeah. So another tip I want to give you when you um, mix colors, especially if you're not planning on using it straight from the palette, 
You should always make sure paint and then swatch it separately to ensure that the color that you ultimately want to use um, is correct before you apply it to your um, paper because watercolor paint it's not like an acrylic paint or an oil paint where you can paint over everything and start from scratch you have to be calculated and be be cautious by just being calculated and cautious about the colors that you apply so I'm covering the whole surface with a very brown with a what is that color with a burnt umber and like like yellow ochre wash and then I'm going to use the burnt umber mixed with a little bit of earth green I think that's the color I'm not exactly sure and then I'm just going to okay no it's rossy it's sanguine Venetian red one of those two and then I'm just going to dab like little drops of the color into the paint the wet surface and that will show you how the paint flows and it will just create like organic blends and then once that is finished I'm going to add some coarse salt and then the coarse salt I'm going to heat gun it and then we are starting we're just going to do the rest of the artwork I'm also going to test the um, the permanence of the paint once I paint the succulents because that will be a good indication of whether this paint is actually permanent once it dries so I'm just going to continue doing this and then I will see you a little and I'll be, see you a little bit later. I'll be back a little bit later. I'm back and as you can see the coarse salt made some very interesting patterns on top of the watercolor paper um, combined with the paint so then I just started painting in details like painting in the ears and once I've, st once I've covered the whole llama I started to paint the finer details by mixing uh, a little bit of darker brown and then using a fine brush to outline the llama so when you um, use a fine brush um, to do outlines I, I find that if you mix the paint thicker and then um, add water until you're happy with the consistency it just helps to control your paint and you should mix enough that you don't have to go back and forth back and forth and risk having different colors with your outline work once I finished outlining um, my little llama I started to add the detail like the eyes and the nose and the mouth and the little toenails on the feet Something that I really noticed about this paint is that if you don't add a lot of water and you want to use it opaque, it's quite intense. The pigment is quite intense and you can actually create like very opaque detail. Like I mean I mix the black with a little bit of water and it kind of looks like I did it with a pen. And so after this I'm just going to paint the carpet and then um, I'm going to do the other details and then I will be back when I start painting the succulents or the cactus cacti cactus cacti that word so I will speed this up and then I will see you just now again
little bit thicker brush um, to paint my succulents or my cacti. Um, you'll see I combine different colors and I use the wet on wet technique just to create some interesting natural movement inside the paint. Um, I've also noticed that um, this paint tends to bleed quite beautifully in watercolors so you can actually play a lot with it quite crazy. Okay, so once I've finished painting everything, you'll see I painted on top of it, on top of the succulents, so I, I layered it. The very nice thing about this paint is that when it dries, it's permanent. So you can layer and layer and layer and build on top of it. The thing with watercolor paint is you want to wait for your surface to dry before you keep on adding more layers. Otherwise, the paint will create like a cauliflower effect and the fibers of the paint will lift off. So this paint is permanent. I find once it's dry and you can work on top of it which means that it gives you a lot more possibilities when it comes to creating portraits and landscapes that require you to layer your paint quite a lot. Another tip is when you layer it is better to start light and then build on top of it versus going dark and trying to add light inside of it. Um, so I'm gonna finish this video basically now and then I'll just give you my final thoughts at the end and then yeah okay I'll be back just now for the last time I promise. So I know this video is a bit long so I'm going to just get to the point and start by talking about the colour. First of all, Fabric Castell selected a great group of colours. Um, they combined colors in such a way that if you are a, begin, a beginner watercolor artist, you would not have to mix anything. They have enough options for you to paint directly from the pans. Um, let's talk about transparency. These paints do have um, some fillers and extenders because you can smell it once you activate the paint. However, um, when you dilute it, you can see that the paint has a very good transparency. So this is actually very good paint, I would say, in general. And then second of all, um, the paint is permanent once it's dried, so you can layer it. So as you grow as a watercolor artist and you want to create more intricate pieces, this paint would allow you to layer and create different depths, like for instance, if you want to paint a portrait or a landscape or something in that line. Second of all, um, I want to talk about the whole package versus what you pay. These paints are really affordable um, and you, if you are a beginner, you don't have to buy anything. Fabric-Castell made it such a way that you can buy this go home and paint. Um, you get a brush, you get a mixing pan, you get a gorgeous selection of colors. This is really a well thought um, set. Then second of all, um, third of all, third of all, overall this is just a very beautiful product. And, Fabric Castell really gave us something amazing. And then, um, no, so I would, would I buy this paint? Yes, I would absolutely buy this paint. I am going to buy the other set for the other colors, especially cold gray, because I love paints gray. That's one of my favorite colors. And they've got other colors, which I think could be really pretty, like the cold, cobalt green, um, the earth green, earth green, wow, and nougat. No, I've got earth green, nougat. I want that color, nougat. And then, the metallics and the neons on colors, the metallics I find work well on black. I'm not sure if you were to use them as an accent how they would work, but overall this is an amazing product. I'm very chuffed with it um, and I would definitely suggest buying this product. I also hope you have a wonderful day and oh! I'm going to upload a traceable version of this to my Facebook page so you guys can go to Painted Lemons and just download it there if you want to duplicate this in your Bible or something like that. And if you have bought this paint set from Faber Castell, I would like to know what your thoughts on it. Please leave a comment in the section, comments in the section, section in the comments. Please leave a comment down below. And then I'll also link a link in the description area of where you can buy this paint, especially if you're in Centurion. Um, yeah, apart from that, um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit long, um, but yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless and okay, bye.